Apologies. In Kerala lingvu meli in seventy si gama eliti god. Mnandire kerera de iti god. Tafadali na penda kutumi aneno god. Apologies for my using the word a god. Try this yourself. I am god. Does this statement unsettle you? Does it cause some uneasiness? Do you think it is a statement of pride, arrogance, or dev worship? Be honest. Can you repeat this statement? I am God and really mean it. Many questions will flood you after you say this statement. But suppose indeed you are God. Then why does it make you uneasy to say I am God? For millions of Africans, this statement I am God, mimini mungu, av mi chi who utterly be rebuffed, never be repeated again. Even hearing this, millions will shove their fingers in their ears. Those of Judaic persuasion will quickly look for sand to throw into the speaker's mouth. Why? Are you a god? You are not a god. You are God. But programmed a divine amnesia is adorned upon a black people because of judaic christian islamic training their idea of god or who or what uh, is god ingrained in them acts as a god or a blind and a watchman to block and flood away and smash away anything else that wants to tell you or to prove to you that indeed you are god others who may say they do not subscribe to abu religions like the quran the torah the bible who still not validate this phrase they have many other reasons maybe agnostic atheistic and psychological if so you are still mentally a christian or you are christianized god's in amnesia and now it can be told strictly looking at this graph you can see that traditional african religions dominated in the 19th century, Christianity was 10%. Traditional African religions were over 75%. And in the 50s and 60s, decline started to set in. And Christianity today is almost dominating in 2010. This graph comes from the Pew Forum on Religion and Public Life. Therefore, from believing that I am God, around 1900 going back to today there is total dislike of that idea the christian understanding of god is accurately stuck in ignorance of african spirituality or history millions of christians never want to explore the source of their belief the reason is the programming that lullabies them in the delusional idea that the word of God is adequate. In other words, they think that the Bible is an adequate uh, a book for them uh, to be guided by. But they forget that the Bible came some 5,000 years after, according to their history, after humanity had already started to live on the earth. So what was happening prior to that? They don't answer or discuss that. So Christianity teaches the Bible only theory and vociferously says the Bible provides the sole solutions to life's problem this is their lock and the key once you understand this concept once you analyze this ideology you can have the key and the lock and you can unlock yourself as well as lock yourself it is the pill that if you swallow it in faith you become a god in amnesia forgetfulness and weak in using your creative powers what it teaches Let's ask a little bit more hard questions. Why uh, are these books missing from the Bible or how, why were they deleted? But these books that are missing are mentioned in the Bible. They in the Old Testament. They are not outside of the Old Testament. Therefore, the book of the wars of the Lord in Numbers 21, 14 is missing. Why? The book of Yasha, Joshua 10, 13 is not there. Why? The book of Acts of Solomon is uh, 1 Kings 4, 11, 41 is not there. Why? Why are these books missing? No Christians will ever think about that. Why? Because they are gods in amnesia. They have been locked by that lock and the key that the book they have been given by the Roman Catholic is, the, is adequate 
and anything else out of that is not adequate. Yes, the uh, Roman Catholic now have the apocrypha and they have the play with their minds. Moses was taught in all the wisdom of ancient Egyptians and he was powerful in both speech and action. He is this is never repeated in scripture. If it is repeated in preaching, if it is repeated in teachings, it is not emphasized why and what aspects of ancient Egyptian wisdom is in the Bible and what powerful speech and what actions should you do that are based on ancient Egyptian wisdom that is not taught that will never be taught the Judaism you hear is from Babylon the Christianity you hear is from Europe prophets today they don't teach anything about that they don't even do they don't even do have anything to do with ancient Egypt yet that's where the key of salvation lies Africans would follow everything, would follow the Latin cross, would follow Islam, would follow Hinduism, would follow Buddhism, would follow Taoism, would follow Shinto, would follow Judaism, would follow Sikhism, would follow anything except their own. Why is it that ours does not work and the foreigners works? No, it is God's in amnesia. Large majorities of black people are asleep. They live in countries that were surveyed by a peer and they believe in one God, they also believe in heaven, they also believe in hell, and large numbers of Christians and Muslims alike believe in the literal truth of their scriptures, either the Bible or the Quran, which is packed with a lot of contradictions, but they believe the contradictions also. Uh, Christianity is, uh, <laughs> is something that is uh, very interesting, but what can we do? The only way we can counteract it is for us. I think to do two things, one, to continue uh, with our efforts, whatever efforts we do, as long as they spread the message and plant the seeds, people will hear, and those that are for this time, they will rise up, and also know how to go back to that, and never to compromise on it, or in any other aspect that connects with it, and to continue to insist that our way is the right way, because it identifies with where we came from and our origins. And then... Uh, on thinking of that, I was also very utterly amazed and shocked today when I uh, I was just doing a few things and thinking about it. And uh, a scripture from the Bible came into my brain, into my head, or like, you know, uh, just popped up. And this scripture was uh, written by Paul uh, in the New Testament. He said... If ever there was no resurrection of Jesus Christ, then our faith is uh, in vain. And uh, it clicked in me and I said, hang on. <laughs> then I wrote, I, I, I woke up and started to write a few equations there. I wrote the few equations like I said, um, proof of Jesus' resurrection is, then I said, uh, not physical, but spiritual. Therefore, it requires faith. All right. And now I came to myself and said, okay, what about me? Proof of my ancestors' life or my ancestors' existence equals me. I am here. I can touch myself. I didn't create myself. Therefore, it is proof that there was someone before me. Uh, well, that's my father and mother. But there was someone again. We go back, we go back, we go back until we come to uh, the creator himself or herself or itself. So... I have more evidence of the resurrection than Christianity because I am here and then I will die, yes, but I have got kids and uh, if I can pass this message to my son and to my daughter, to my relatives and they can master this message, then it means there is no Christianity for them because Christians cannot have both physical proof and spiritual proof, which I have. Because my, my spiritual proof is that my ancestors are dead. But my physical proof is that they are alive with me. I think you get what I'm saying. It's, it's something that I, I think I have to develop and, and have it clear in my mind. It has always been there because it is from the belief, our ancestral belief that uh, the living dead. That word... I used it in uh, one of my videos, I think two years ago, but it is, it is now become clearer and clearer when I compare it to uh, uh, Christianity. And uh, why and how we were duped? We were duped by a trick, a, a trick, somebody, just a trick, a twist of words, and that duped the whole race. So you are right.
<laughs> you are very right. Most people also say they attend worship services at least once a week. They pray every day. In the case of Muslims, generally they pray five times a day facing Mecca. They fast during the holiday periods, especially in Ramadan, or on Lent, and give religious alms. They tithe. Uh, they give zakat. Indeed, Sub-Saharan Africa is clearly among the most religious places in the world. But it is the most poor and poverty-filled place on the earth, with a lot of political confusion, political corruption, destruction, and soon the Chinese will grab everything. They are already grabbing everything in Zambia, in Zimbabwe, in Mozambique, in South Africa, in Botswana, in Namibia. They are grabbing everything. They are being given everything. We'll show you a diagram there. There is a map that we want to show you. This is the diagram we wanted to show that wealthier nations tend to be less religious, but the United States is an exception. You can see that estimated 2013 gross domestic product per capita PPP, current international uh, US dollar. You can see Senegal here, less than uh, $10,000. Kenya, less than $10,000. Uganda, less than Zimbabwe. Every African country is there. Then you can see South Africa is there a little bit, but it's all less than $10,000. But you look at Australia, it's about 40000 Britain is about 40000 Can we therefore say irreligiousness is the word we need or is the way we want? Poverty amid strong religiousness. Every other country that wants to be rich, to be prosperous, has come to Africa and they've dug everything. They want gold. You can see they've transferred all the gold from Africa into Europe, all the gold from Africa in uh, America and soon China will just take everything and therefore the countries that have lost a lot are the ones that are dominated by Christianity in red and also Islam in blue in Africa all of them are gone there are over 400 million Africans uh, diaspora Christians believers or worldwide they live in poverty 400 million is this just a coincidence no it's one of the underlying symptoms of not understanding that they are divine they are god so modern civilization is destructive right never forget that western civilization based upon is based upon murderous ecocidal evil dominance of as western civilization is based upon centuries of murder enslavement of indigenous peoples and nature that continues to this day some 500 years ago european tribes spilled forth into the world in a wave of ecological colonialism that they began an ongoing onslaught of murderous genocide, enslavement, rape, and ecocide in the name of Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, coupled to greedy capitalism and racism. At the end, this is where we are going. Never forget that our ancestors had the civilizations that reigned for millions of years with nature in a place. So we are going to look at the Neterus. This you can read from this to understand what we have just explained. Are you really divine? Yes. Your divinity is a process, not the end. Compared with the affluence of nations offloading their religiosity and our eternal being, we are much greater. But we have fallen. The greatest ever civilization by Africa lasted millions of years with no pollution, no destruction of the earth through human actions because it was nature best more significantly what does this mean for you it means that you can at the least intellectually know that you are not bound by any christian doctrines nothing no original sin no curse on you no doctrine of depravity that states that you are corrupt and therefore you need a savior just jesus was made up so these doctrines were made up they have mentally tortured you it's time for you to grab the lock and key and unlock and beef ancestral teachings yes you are divine you are god but african ancestors taught that a human being is the ultimate expression of the natural components of all that make up the universe correct they called these natural components neta we have already said that every component that makes the universe is part of you correct when you know how to access the netas within you become a powerful aspect of creation. You become, become superhuman because you are neta. Our modern idea of God is a misapplication of the scientific or spiritual understanding of the workings of the universe as revealed by our ancestors. You are the microcosm of the ultimate creator. For a brief moment, you are asleep and you are fallen into amnesia. Truth is more powerful than the lie that you are not a God. Know thyself and you will know Neta, not God, but Neta. African traditional beliefs in general taught that a supreme being who created and ordered the world 
is often experienced as distant or unavailable to humans. Why? Because we have been programmed to think that God is outside, yet he is inside. Uri home. You are the possessor of the divine. Everything is inside. Lapsed social responsibilities by the animal being or violation of taboos are widely recognized in our hardships, in our suffering, as individuals and as, as committees. It must be countered with acts that re-establish order, harmony and well-being. Now, can you affirm without any strings? This your identity self? I am God. This is you. Wake up from amnesia. Atema Amun. Thank you. Tatenda Siabonga. Subscribe to our channel, Hamiti Hebrew Ethics. This is Priest Rabbi, LM Tumizulu. Contact us on this email. Thank you. Goodbye.